goodness. Oh, I have never seen anything like this, Bobby. Never like strong cow milk. Okay. And this one has condensed milk, so I'm excited. 1976 from New York. Oh. I moved to Boston. Oh. Okay. For many people who like Hong Kong. I yeah. Don't like it. When you think of Boston, what comes to mind? It's probably lobsters and chatter and something Irish. But there actually is a sizable Asian population both in the main city and the suburbs. Today we're exploring Boston's main Chinatown to see what it might even do better than the rest of the country even if you're not aware of it. There are some dishes that I've never had before and a ton of spots that focus on fusion cuisine through an Eastern lens. All right, you guys, we are in front of Cafe Fin Vietnamese Coffee here uh, near Chinatown. We're right outside of it. Yeah, we're, of we're course, we were not the Boston plug via New York. New York, Boston, You East are Coast. telling me that the Vietnamese community in Boston is really coming into its own. I mean, tell me about it. We're in front of like a modern Vietnamese coffee shop right now. The Viet's in Boston are really heavy. People don't realize on the East Coast, one of the biggest populations. They're just trying, they're trying to make their own mark on the city. They have the classics, but now they're opening up the modern stuff, you know? You could get, you could go to Dorchester, you get the, you know, traditional fuss spot. Doc, be clear, you said that you think that Boston Viet is better than New York Viet food. I'm a diehard New Yorker, born and raised, you know, until I die, I got the, got the Mets hat on right now, but Boston Viet food definitely outranks New York Viet food. Let's check it out. We are at Cafe Thin. This is such a dope concept. They wanted to merge like a Vietnamese coffee shop, a modern Western coffee shop, and a bun mi shop. Did you, guys, did you warn her that Vietnamese coffee is really strong? Yes, she did warn us that, and that's what we wanted. Yes. <laughs> that no, I like strong coffee. Okay. And this one has condensed milk, so I'm excited. Yeah. But you guys, we are here with the uh, pho burrito here at Cafe Finn, man. What are you thinking? Honestly, this looks a lot better than I was expecting. They got the, the rice noodles instead of rice. You know, they got the beef, some cilantro, and then they got like this little like dip for us, yeah. like straight pho broth. I know their entire goal with this was to make pho a hand food. Yeah. And the way they were able to do it with like the pho bowl and almost like the sulung tong, you know, like this Korean straight, stone like, pop like French bowl. style, you know, like they have the French dip sandwiches, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, this I is like fascinating, really... man. All right, I'm, I'm going in, but I'm dipping this. Pho burrito. It's good. That's, that's as close to the pho experience as you can get, I think, without actually having pho. Like, that's so yeah. close to the... I, as far as like in your hand, yeah. that's unbeatable. Yeah. All right, you guys, we're looking at the drinks from uh, Cafe Finn. I've got a regular, you know, elevated Cafe Suda, which is the, you know, standard Vietnamese coffee with the chicory. And then you've got what? Boston cream, you know? It's kind of crazy because like Boston cream is just a donut. Like it's what you get at Dunkin' Donuts. Finn and coffee. coffee. It's definitely a fusion, but this is the smoothest Vietnamese cafe suda that I've ever had. This just tastes like straight, like, like heavy cream, like sweet in the coffee. It's like the perfect. Did, I'm not did a big. Did it taste like a donut? It did not taste like the donut, but you know, I'm not a. I'm like a really. I have. A, I feel like I have a childish palate. Like I don't like bitter coffees. I don't like bitter things. And this is perfect. All right, you know, we could not try off, you know, elevated Vietnamese Boston food without some, you know, elevated local Asians. Knock, you got your homies here from Boston. We got our homies. They're really from Lowell. You know, shout out the 978. We got Paul out here looking like a 90s Cambodian gangster. We got, uh, we got uh, Mikey, who's like Mr. Vietnam, like national VSA board, like. All right, so this is the cold cut bun mi that they have. And so they would do things a little bit different. They give you the sauce on the side and they got a little, they'll put the peppers in the sauce so the spiciness will come from the sauce. Right here we got the chicken bun mi. And so they have their own nick mum and teriyaki style sauce right here that we can dip in. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. Like the teriyaki is not too overpowering. It's pretty, pretty good. Like in Vietnamese, we are saying long lum. You know? Man, this is good, man. Um, normally, if I say this, it's called Chan. What are we in front of right now? We're in front of a classic spot, YY. People say hole in the wall, YY is straight up a hole in the ground. What I love about Boston's Chinatown is that it's so compact. Obviously, you know, I'm familiar with New York's Chinatown, but I would say some of the streets here are even smaller. Would you compare this to New York, Manhattan, Chinatown's Wa Fung? Yeah, 100%. Wa Fung, okay. definitely. All right, we're gonna get the three treasure rice, of course. Where are you from? New York? Yeah, New York. Yeah, New York Chinatown better. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Hold on, he just said New York Chinatown's better. Yeah. I like Boston Chinatown, it has a, it's charming. Uh, but but your spot is better than New York Chinatown, right? I have a lot of things that I like to eat, I don't know. 1976, from New York. Oh, and moved to Boston. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. so he's from New York Chinatown. Uh, they think I'm from New York. Uh, at that time, he's younger. Okay. Uh, but I'm feeling, you know, too many people look like Hong Kong. I yeah. don't like it. Uh, I, I want to, you know, they take quiet. Before I work in uh, France. Okay. Wow. The France yes. red. Come here, go. Your. 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 Your.
No, hey, <laughs> brown Scotty Wah. Oh, brown, 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 brown Scotty Shoot Wah. No, I'd be fine. Why in kitchen? You I know. know, I know, but did you, your, 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 yeah, your. Hey, <laughs> Don't remind him of the BX days. Hey man, your son hey. is serving the country, man. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Say lay, say lay, say lay. Okay. That, that is a uh, continuation okay. in, in uh, uh, North Carolina. That that is that is uh, like a uh, Georgia. Uh huh. Real Bostonio. Yeah. Shout out to him. All right, you guys. We are in the world famous, legendary Boston Chinatown YY, and um, let Bro. me just tell you this. I can see YY. Bro. I can see why people talk about this spot. You have your house-made chili oil right here. I might just have to pour that on. And then you have your house-made gurung chong, your ginger scallion. Ginger scallion. It's, it's looking real green, you know, man. You know, I'm not That's gonna what lie. I like Sometimes to see. I don't really like it when people say the dirtier the Chinese spot, the better. Yeah, yeah. I actually think that that's a little bit outdated saying. Yeah. Andrew, you got the cha shiu nak. You got the kai, aka chicken. I've got the op, aka Ooh. the duck. Why, why? Ooh. Salty. Mm. Flavorful, spicy. David, he was telling me that traditionally in Hong Kong for siu yuk, you never eat it with hoisin sauce, you just eat it with salt. That's how you're supposed to usually eat it. See, seafood. When it comes to Chinese barbecue, I've never been a big fan of it, like five spice flavor, you know what I mean? That's very prominent in yeah. Chinese barbecue, but I feel like the, here, like the, the ginger scallion oil, like it really balances everything out. Like this is definitely right, right, right. one of the better plates I've ever had. Pro tip, guys, if you come to barbecue spots, ask for extra, extra ginger scallion, AKA gurung chong, jiang chong. Oh, Honestly, this man, is, I just, this is good, bro. People earlier was saying it was the chicken. I, I think he's right. Oh, oh. Yo, straight up, I can see, like we said, I'm not trying to kill this joke. Actually, I'm not gonna say it. I can see why, why everybody told us to come to why, why. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a five out of five for me. Honestly, bro. I'm not a big fan of Chinese barbecue, I can't lie. And this is like my favorite plate that I've ever had, so I gotta go five out of five. Guys, I know some people have messaged us and said, oh, why, why, over the years, the quality went down. If this is where the quality went down to, then I can't imagine where it was at. Because to be honest, everything is juicy. Um, I think certain bites are better than others, but to be honest, overall, this whole experience, plus the house-made chili oil, it's banging on all cylinders. Five out of five, five out of five for why, why? Man, I wish we could finish this all, but we gotta pack it up and head to our next spot. Boston Chinatown, let's go. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye, bye-bye, yeah, okay. thank you. Welcome, see you again. <laughs> all right, you guys, we have arrived at the legendary Gaga Seafood Restaurant. Um, I saw this all over Yelp. There's a photo with a lobster over sticky rice. So Boston's known for their seafood, lobster rolls, and stuff like that, so it's like a little bit more of an Asian take. You got the high quality lobster, you got the sticky rice, solid late night spot. Where else could you get twin lobsters at two in the morning? Yeah, and you know what's really interesting? I was looking at the photos, Andrew. Uh, Chinese, we have lobsters, I think in Asia too. But they, these are Boston lobsters. You can tell by the redness. Yeah, and you know, when you get the Atlantic lobsters, extra cold waters, the lobsters are a little bit more fatty. Sticky rice lobster. lobster. Okay. Say 10 years. 10 years, okay. Where are you from? Uh, from Guangdong. Guangdong. Guangdong, the, the oh, South see. Thailand. I love Boston too. Okay, here we have the Long Ha Lo Mai Fan, aka stir fried lobster with sticky rice, man. It's actually surprising. This is probably the most popular dish here, but it's not on the menu. It's kind of like an open secret, you know what I mean? Like if you know, you know, but everyone knows. So. Yo, I kind of, that kind of adds to the mysteriousness or kind of the mystique of it all. That's and cool. you know what I got to say? This is one of the most compact seafood restaurants I've been in. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna serve you. I'm gonna put, oh, I'm gonna first get Yo, you. Yo, the... very few places actually have this dish. I'm not saying no places have this dish, but it's not like every spot has. Yeah. That is that in New York, they prefer a different style of uh, with black beans and uh, a little bit maybe uh, egg shards. And then this uh, is more of a sticky rice style, it's more Boston style, so mm. we're checking it out. You know what's special about Ooh. it though, it's because it's a Boston lob style. Like ah. Straight from the harbor. To be honest, it's probably from Maine, but. <laughs> <laughs> Boston lobster sticky rice. That's good. Oh. That lobster flavor is rich. I would say surprisingly, the lobster flavor is shining which I totally agree. Sometimes they'll have lobster in a dish, but you can't really taste it. So when, you, when it's lobster season, uh, I think the water is warmer, and what ends up happening is that the meat ends up being sweeter, so we end up getting like a, a more pure lobster taste. Oh my gosh. Is it safe to say that Gaga's going straight to the Mata? It's going straight to the Mata, 100%. Explain that real quick. Mata is actually a, a Bengali word for head, right? It means head, and then it got really popularized in drill music in New York, but it's like, you know, like aggressive rap music for people that don't know. Shock so how do I say, my head is hard? Amar Mata, Amar is me. Amar? Mata. Arma Mata. Onik is very. Onik? Shokta. Oh. Ome Mata, Onik Shokta. 
one of the things that's very charming about Boston's Chinatown is like the old New England kind of structures and buildings that you don't really get in New York. New York, you get a little bit more of these taller uh, Dutch style buildings, but I don't know what it is out here. They just look like they used to be houses. So it's kind of cool. All right, continuing the 2021 Boston Chinatown food crawl. We're outside of Bao Bao Bakery, man. Tell us about it. Bao Bao Bakery, Double Chin, owned by the, the same, same people. Uh, this was originally owned by the people that run Double Chin, their parents. And so when they opened Double Chin, it was kind of like to pay homage to their family and keep it connected. And to this day, the two restaurants are still connected. You know what I noticed visually in Chinatown is like there's a lot of things from 40, 50 years ago. And then there's a lot of stuff that opened up in the past like two years. Yeah, yeah. All right, you guys, we're in Bao Bao Bakery. Everybody pick one thing. Uh, for me, I'm going to gravitate more towards the modern items that I've never seen. But they definitely got the TV, LCD menus and things of that nature, which more indicate, you know, an updated mindset. Hold up. This whole thing is cake. This is Dalco. Wow. Yo. Yo, you were amazed, you, bro. I'm, you was amazed. I'm not, I, maybe it's because I'm single, but that I was looking at it a little too long. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Or no, you were sexually I'm, I'm, attracted I'm really, to the cake. I'm really not going to get more into that <laughs> statement or joke, David, you know, that I could go down the wrong path with that one. So let's go right, talk about right. these cakes. I'm, I'm going, I'm going. Okay, you guys, we're at Bao Bao Bakery. Their specialty item is this boba joint and, and and this is kind of common but very few places are going to give you the boba on the side to pour it yourself i think that that's actually something i have not seen yo you are ready for pour it's raining outside but it's about to be raining boba in boston ah! you go for you the cake guy i am the cake guy there's a little bit of a thicker crepe cake millie crepe okay okay the densest millie crepe that i ever had all right, you guys, we have arrived in front of what I heard is the wackiest Asian-American fusion restaurant, maybe in any Chinatown in America. It's got some really interesting dishes well, on the menu, you know? David, we've been to a lot of Chinatowns. So we've eaten at a lot of Chinese uh, restaurants. And I got to say, looking at the menu here, it is doing things differently. Right, they've got spam fries, Peking duck fries. It's like a fusion spot. And usually something that's that fusion you would think is serving, you know, non-Asians. Yeah. But this is in the heart of Chinatown. And everyone that comes here, it's like pretty, pretty Asian. Like after a long night out, this is one of the few spots that's open till like four in the morning. And they carry uh, wacky alcoholic drinks as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Double All chin. Right. Let's check it out. Let's go. All right, you guys, we are with some of the most unique items at Double Chin. Uh, like we said, super wacky, but I heard delicious still. Yeah. Nong Shin Ramen Chao Fun or Chao Min. Yeah. It's chow mein, but with shin ramen. So they've actually taken the shin ramen out of this bowl and they stir fried it, they cooked it, chicken, onions, everything. So we got the Peking duck fries, you know? I feel like Peking ducks, it's like a special treat, you know what I mean? And yeah. to put it with fries, like this regular kind of snack with a little hoisin and the cucumbers on top, bro. Like, You're right, I think in recent years, uh, people have figured out a way to make duck a lot cheaper. Yeah. Or, or even uh, mimic that Peking duck style without the whole process. They got those like yeah. dollar buns and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Right now. They, yes. they're, they're able to like get you like 80% of the way there for like 40% of the price. Yeah. yeah, this is a spam and taro cut into the shape of fries served in the spam container. Obviously I've got, uh, you know, I, dude, they got such wacky stuff here. They got this uh, LED cube. It's uh, called SPF 50? Yeah, it's called SPF 50, but this is alcoholic. 60? I mean, this is lit. Uh, Lai Ta Boba, okay? So this is gonna be a Hong Kong milk tea. Let me just pre-game with this real quick. Double, double chin. chin. Probably if you eat here all the time, you will get a double mm -hmm. chin. I like this dish because it reminds me of the Hong Kong style, like chow, um, instant noodle chow mein, except it kind of has that little bit of a shin ramen flair. So it's a little bit of that spicy Korean-ness. Mac and cheese made with hall fun. Goodness, oh, I have never seen anything like this, Bobby. Oh Mac my gosh, do you see this? Mac, Mac and cheese hall fun. Yo, that's good. Wow. I didn't think it was gonna be good, but it's good. But this was a five out of five, Mac and cheese hall fun. You guys think people should take their rice noodles at home and start making Mac and cheese with them? Guys, you you, you might not have what you need. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he had a really hot walk. He was taking some of that heavy cream, but man, I gotta say, as far this, see, see this dish, David? We've been to a lot of very expensive hipster restaurants in New York City, and I could actually see this dish being at one of those expensive hipster spots, but they're just doing it first. They're doing it on the more affordable end. My biggest takeaway is that your hoisin sauce tastes mad good on fries, bro. I feel like I gotta start doing that at home, you know? All right. It's, interesting, you know. it's an interesting sweet, sweet and salty combination. Asian American fusion in Boston might be more developed than any other city I've been to in America. Really, even more than Cali? Yeah, yeah. Wow. honestly, because Cali, it's like, they tend to do more elevated originals. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is like 
just taking it in a whole nother direction. I don't know if it's the amount of students or the Harvard, MIT influence. <laughs> You're saying some MIT guys People just in. thinking differently just, out here. It's a five out of five, let me reiterate. Okay, we're here with the owner, Gloria, of Double Chin. Um, tell us what you're doing here, because for a lot of people that are reviewers, it's like, this food is like, it's wacky, it's crazy, but it's good, too. <laughs> Thank you, I'm so flattered. We grew up in Boston. Um, our family is Chinese, but we grew up here as Asian Americans. So our menu here is a way to express our identity. We have a lot of the classic American dishes um, glorified with Chinese American touches. So my parents have always been in the food industry. They've been working um, they have had food businesses for like the last many decades, but when they passed away um, in 2009 and 2014, we kind of wanted to carry on their legacy and do something fun and creative. We didn't want to just open a random Chinese restaurant in Chinatown. We really wanted to do something that was cool, express our identities, where we could tell our own story. All right, you guys, there is not just Chinese spots in Chinatown. There are uh, a lot of Pan-Asian collections of different things. We're in front of Penang. Penang is a city in Malaysia. Yo, Malaysian yep. food. This, this, this particular Malaysian restaurant, though, has an interesting background and a crazy connection to New York City. Yeah, so it used to be owned by the same people as Nanya in New York. Like, uh, Malaysia is made up of three main ethnic groups, Malays, Chinese, and Tamils, right? Mm -hmm. And so Tamils still play a huge part in, like, the food, curries, right, breads, right. all that kind of stuff. You see the influence on the food. And for people like my parents who aren't super explorative eaters, it's kind of like eating something they know, but also something they never had before. Was it kind of like a, a fusion point? Yeah, but like an ancient fusion point. Ancient fusion, yeah. Ancient, fusion, yeah, sure. ancient hey. fusion is fire Yo, because no, people, you know it's worked for generations. <laughs> Let's go to Penang. David, we've been to Penang in Malaysia before. Yeah, so, it is, it's a very interesting city. They speak a lot of Cantonese and a lot of hook in there. And uh, let's check it out. Let's go la. All right, you guys, we are at Penang Restaurant, uh, an offshoot of Nanya. They have gone has since gone their separate ways, a very classic Asian restaurant story. Knock, we heard you loud and clear. Let me just come out and say it. Malaysia is part of a lot of different cultures. They have their local Malay culture, they've got the Sinosphere, and they've got the Indiosphere, and they're all very, very extremely valued so, and contributed to this delicious food. So these dishes that we have here are not just your regular Malaysian dishes, but these are gonna be the ones that are a little bit more Indian influenced, right? Somewhat, we, got, we got the Indian mee goreng, so like, you know, mee goreng itself is a Chinese dish, but they put a little Indian spin on this one, okay. some curry powder, some turmeric. Um, so this is the nak, the nak mee goreng. The nak mee goreng. Okay, represent. We got the nasi lemak, which is the national dish of Malaysia, but very Malay. Um, and actually, funny enough, I think if I was to compare Bengali food to another culture, I think Malay food is the closest one. Really? Like, how we eat our rice and like curries and stuff like that, I feel like those are the two I, most similar. I, 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 I remember, I, would, I see what you're saying. Never had Indian mee goreng, all right? I'm excited. But actually, mee goreng guys actually really popular in uh, even like Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. That's Indomie. Indomie got super oh, popular in, in Nigeria. That's Indian. Indian Mee kind of like South Indian flavors, right? South Tamarind, Indian uh, maybe turmeric. So martabak is very Malay Indian fusion. It's roti and it's stuffed with uh, beef, right? Minced beef. It's kima, minced beef. And they give you a little curry, coconut curry chicken dipping sauce for it. Right, the martabak is fresh, gotta get it. And of course it's, uh, it's beef, guys. No pork no here. No pork on my fork, bro. <laughs> no pork on his fork. Mmm. Oh, this is good. Whoa. I'm more used to the uh, dessert marta box. Marta box, money. Dessert, dessert one. You speak Malay? Sediki, sediki. A little bit. Nak, you speak, you speak some Malay. Yo, yo I feel like Malayu. Nak, Nak is, is representing for all of the Indio sphere right here. <laughs> you know, shout, out, shout out to my Tamils, wanna come? Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I gotta, gotta represent for everybody. Uh, see, you see how thin it is? I got the crispy bits, I got the soft bits. That's, that's the ideal. It's like skin, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I'm, I got the nasty in, in, uh, If you go to like um, the Caribbean, they also say roti, right? They actually say roti skin, just like you did, to refer to these. Nasi, nasi Lamak Lamak and roti. Malaysian food is so underrated, guys. You find yourself a good Malaysian spot, you park your car and you just stay there. I think Malaysian food has some of the best balance between like, like we were saying, some of the, the Chinese elements, but the spicy Southeast Asian and Indian elements, and they just know how to do it right. And I you can like, get down and dirty and messy with your hands if you want to, or you can eat the noodle dishes. This is what I'm saying. You could get all of our parents in this restaurant right now, and they would all find something on the menu that would appeal to them. Or maybe even our grandparents. Our grandparents. And people that are picky eaters, you could bring them all here. And if you're if you're some Asian, some form of Asian, you'll, your grandparents' parents will find something on this menu. Chocolate Diao. So this is a little bit more on the Chinese side, yeah. but, but, but still diverse influences. 
I don't see between the Roti Canal and the Charque Tiao here, those were both a five out of five for me. Yeah. Like Boston Chinatown, you know, guys, don't let the old history as a combat zone or red light district <laughs> shake you out of here. The food is A1. Well, and, and let's be honest here, guys, uh, as we may or may not know that in a lot of red light districts, the food is good. So we got the nasi lemak. Nasi means rice, lemak means fatty, right? So it refers to the coconut. Uh, the coconut milk that they cook the rice in, it's supposed to be real like fatty, you know what I'm saying? Like soul food kind of. Got a little chicken curry. They usually got some sort of anchovy mix over here, hard boiled egg, and the, the carrot. This is actually like a very, very Malay like dish without much influence from the outside, you know? It's very like just sticking to them. But it looks, if I gave this to my parents, this looks like just like a Bengali dish, you know? And I know just how to eat it, you know what I'm saying? Like this is like like second nature to me, you know, to go like this, get a little chicken, you know? Oh, yo, and, Andrew, I'm gonna say something crazy. What? I think it's better than Nanya in Chinatown. I agree. Chinatown. And you know I have a love for Grand Street, Dude. but I'm just saying, I gotta say it how I say Are it. you trying to say a spot in Boston can be better than a spot in New York? This is totally shaking uh, my preconceived notion that everything Spirit in New York Republic. is better than Boston. But that is not necessarily true. Shake that off right now. Boston has some really great food and some good people. Now, there are so many different spots. Honestly, Nock, I've got to say, Boston Chinatown really impressed me. Dude, there's so many things that are like a crossover from New York City. Yeah. Um, but we got to check out this spot because she was asking us to come in and just open up. It's called Bun Mi Hong Kur. You know, I'm sorry I mispronounced that. Uh, you wanted to check this spot out. I've been meaning to because like there's not a lot of Bun Mi spots like in Chinatown. There was a couple, but some of them closed really quickly and stuff like that. And outside of Dorchester, there's... It's, it's hard to find like great Vietnamese food. You know, Dorchester is really close, so we end up just going there most of the time. But you know, anything close by, like I always want to come. All come right, see well, what's up. well, you got you got a Viet homie with you, right? Yeah, we got the, we, right. got the we got Mr. Vietnam. We, got, we have the, we have the Mr. Vietnam Mr. Viet plug. Vietnam. How no, how do you say this? How do you say this? Ban mi hong kek. All right, ban mi hong kek. Let's check it out. Oh, khu khát ham and another one. All right, you guys, we are trying this authentic Saigon Bun Mi with Mikey. You had very good Vietnamese skills. Probably of the multiple guests that we've had, it was top five percentile for in language communication. So, so Mr. Vietnam, Mikey, uh, I'm gonna need it. I'm gonna need you to tell me what are some super, super authentic elements of this banh mi. So obviously, Go for, for the regular banh mi, we have to have the, the ham. So when you look at it, you have the ham, and then we call that ja, and then we have the cured pork right here that they make. In the pate, and, right? Yeah, in the pate, and the, the mayo that they make from Dude, egg whites. The mayo, the, talk, talk about the mayo, because a lot of people, their mainstream banh mi is using mainstream American mayo. Yeah, for, for a Vietnamese mayo, we usually just beat the egg yolks, right? We beat it until in the butter, until it becomes nice and buttery and it looks like mayo consistency. It's not like American mayo. Right. So it has a different flavor. Yo, this might be one of the most authentic bun mis I've ever had because I have not get the chance, uh, had the chance to go to Vietnam yet. Yeah. Authentic, authentic bun mi. Dude, this is lit, man. This might, dude, this is more authentic than the ones in Seattle, even. And Seattle's more authentic than New York. Yeah. One thing that I do know about bun mis is that traditionally, uh, Vietnamese baguettes so baguettes come from France, right? But in France, they make baguettes out of wheat flour, right? But when they came to Vietnam, wheat didn't grow that well. So they had to substitute it with rice flour sometimes. That's why, like, Vietnamese baguettes have a different texture than you get at a French bakery or something like that. Oh, um, that's a good gem, man. I didn't know that. So you're saying they almost have some rice to it? Yeah, some rice flour. Right? Yo, I feel like I'm out in District 5 of Ho Chi Minh that's City right sound, now. Yeah. I like my bun mis wet and moist paws, but this is good. You know, I never really liked the, the special until mm. now. Mm. This is the very first time I've really liked the number one special. So shout out to, uh, how do you say it again? Bun Mi Hung Kwe. Try Bun, Bun Mi Hung Kwe. What do you want people to know about Boston Chinatown? It's lit. <laughs> All right, you guys, the last spot on our 2021 Boston food crawl is Shoujo. Uh -huh. This is really inventive. They've got stuff like Hong Kong egg waffle, chicken and waffles. Doc, you personally told me it's a great place to take a date. It is. It's very uh, vibey. My ex may or may not have worked here. Uh, spent a lot of a lot of hours in this. Wow! Restaurant. Shout out. <laughs> She's um, probably gonna see this. Um, but they have a lot of cool like artwork on the side. So obviously they're trying to bring a more modern kind of like nightlife, maybe Budokan type of vibe. The, the vibe here. that I explained is like you'll be in there. They'll be playing loud DMX, right? But then you got old school Hong Kong black and white like kung fu movies. Hey, hey, when your relationship going good, you go to shoujo. When your relationship break up, you go to double chin. <laughs> 
When you guys get into a fight at the club, you guys will double chin afterwards to resolve your issues. <laughs> We're just kidding, guys. <laughs> there were so many spots that we wanted to include in this crawl, guys, but we are limited by time and scheduling and just, uh, you know, different places open at different times. This is our last spot. Sorry if we forgot your favorite. We will come back at another time, but let's check out Shoujo. Let me show you Shoujo. We're here with one of the managers at Shoujo. What are you guys trying to accomplish with this spot? Because it's kind of like... Fusion, right? Yeah, so we're a modern Asian fusion spot in Chinatown. Uh, we definitely are very hip hop culture kind of influenced. Um, so we try to bring a little bit of um, that hip hop and graffiti culture into Chinatown. We are uh, with the spread here at Shoujo. They've been around for nine years, but they're constantly updating their menus and the drink programs. This is the third iteration of the chicken and waffle. They've changed the recipe three times. They did okay. call the chicken and waffles 3.0. Yeah, 3.0. All right, hey, 3.0, that means it's probably the best version. Uh, this is really, really dope because it has the kai pai, which is more from like a Hong mm. Kong cafe side, but they fried it southern fried chicken style and they made it like a thing. David, <laughs> we've seen a lot of Asian- well, David, we've mm. seen a lot of Asian chicken and waffles before, man. Cut that open. Hong Kong chicken and waffles here at Shoujo Boston. Dark meat, juicy, like the savoriness of the chicken, but the sweetness of the waffle and the syrup. You know what I like about that five spice syrup is that it has like a little bit of a spicy hum to it. So when you pour it on, it's got like this salty, spicy kick. All right, guys, here, the next thing I got here is their creation. You got the shoujo nader. I'm just gonna cut it in half. Uh, you know what I really love about this is they could have cheaped out and just got the frozen bows, but they chose to make their own bows and steam them in house. That's a lot of extra work. Yeah. It's like the craziest Egg McMuffin burger you've ever seen in your life. A lot of people in their minds want a spot like this. They're like, yo, I want to serve Asian food with hip hop and make it cool, make it like a nightlife spot. But they really did it out here in Boston, man. Shojinator burger. Every good Asian spot still has to have a burger on their menu. And this is delicious, man. That Korean queso works out really well. And honestly, this is one of the best Asian fusion burgers I've ever had. It's kind of like a... Kind of like animal style fries or like carne asada fries, but they got the mapo tofu, ground beef. Mm -hmm. They got the kimchi. They got the the fries. They do with duck fat, fried in yeah. duck fat, which you know. Shadow, shadow fries, fries. shadowless fries. I know why you were talking this spot up, man. I know why. I'm not gonna lie. I was a little skeptical at first. I was looking at the, you know, I was like, okay. No, is it, because is a it lot of people do Asian fusion, but and play rap music. Yeah. But for a lot of people, it doesn't come together. Dude, and I, I was like, is, is, is this a little try hard spot? No. Nah. No, they try hard to make the food good. You guys, for the very first time, Andrew, I'm gonna give it all three of these hip hop Chinese fusion dishes a five out of five. We are wrapping up 2021 Boston Chinatown Food Crawl. Like I said, I apologize again if your favorite spot didn't get in or your family spot didn't get in. We can't go to everywhere. There was a ton of shabu spots. The moral of the story is the reason why we did this video is just to show people that Boston Chinatown has some really good and cool things. They got the traditional, we took you to the cheap spots, and we're taking you to the new fusion spots. No, we went to YY, to Shoujo, to... Penang, went to Malaysia, to, you know, to, you know, to Romeo Must Die. Yeah, Nock was speaking <laughs> Malay to the waiters. That was real crazy, man. Yo, you guys follow Knock on social media. Why don't you plug in? You have your own food show, right? Yeah, we do. Uh, it's called the Fake Food Show. We do a lot of local stuff in Boston. We're starting to travel a little bit. Come check us out. I'm bridging a lot of communities on there, too. Uh, my ass, Hard Knock Life on everything. Uh, hard Knock as an NAQ. But, you know. And, and you, you guys may or may not remember because we didn't get a chance to bring it up from the Bengali Jackson Heights video. Oh my God, I'm a legend of my, I'm a legend of my neighborhood now, you know? <laughs> you, guys, you guys put me on. Cemented hey, no. as part No, we don't. You, you, you know, people might think you're joking when you say that, and you are joking, but you're also serious. <laughs> because uh, everywhere we go in New York City, Bengali people are always hey. talking about it. History goes to the ones who document it. I'm just saying, it's documented. It's, documented. it's in stone. Until next time, you guys, huge shout out to everybody in Boston, Boston's Chinatown. Let us know what else we need to check out in Boston or in a city nearby. Uh, and until next time, guys, we're out. Peace. Boston's Chinatown was way more charming than I thought. And I think that the fact that the rest of the city isn't that diverse makes the Asian community even more tight-knit. It reminded me of growing up in Seattle because at that time, all the Asians knew each other since there really wasn't that many of us. And the community vibe is special. Plus, the food was super impressive quality-wise, which always helps. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I just wanted to say that, you know, our, our my, my best friend, our homie, Ken passed away recently, and it's because of him that I have my passion for bridging communities and showcasing different neighborhoods, traveling, all that stuff, my passion for food and culture. That all came from meeting him, and so I want to dedicate this video to his memory. Yeah, he cannot say it any better than myself, you know, like, Ken was always about bringing the communities together, whether it be through urban culture, street culture, or food. So. I'm glad that we were able to do this video here, showing all the different cultures and foods in Chinatown, Boston. I know, I know he'd be proud of us, so 
you know, this and everything else I do, I always dedicate dedicate to my brother, man, Ken. Yeah, I love you, bro. Um, rest in peace, Kenneth.